it's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm in Luxembourg. Uh, so I present an overview of my work recently on uh, short to adiabaticity. And uh, let me just give a very short introduction slide about myself. So uh, I was a postdoc in Los Alamos, got some independent position in Bilbao at the IPC and just recently moved to Luxembourg. I thought I just put a map of Europe to show where, well, Western Europe to show where Luxembourg is, <laughs> as I don't expect everyone to know like this position. So, so far we are, the physics department is in the center of Luxembourg, which is a beautiful uh, city and they're constructing a new campus, uh, not far from the French border in some industrial zone, which also promised to be a beautiful campus. So uh, this talk, enters in the framework of dynamical quant uh, control and uh, I'll motivate it from the point of view of quantum thermodynamics. So if you want to do quantum heat engines, uh, you can run a working media through uh, a strokes of uh, decompression, cooling, compression and heating. And in this uh, framework of quantum thermodynamic, there's a trade off between efficiency and power. The faster you run your cycle, the more power you get, but the less efficiency because of the friction that you create. So there are some techniques that help you deal with this trade-off, and they're called as uh, mainly go under the umbrella of short to adiab adiabaticity. So what it is is basically going to a trajectory where you avoid the friction. So let's take a classical picture where you would go and uh, based this sweater that just uh, brings like a cup of, let's say, champagne. Uh, if you go too slowly, then uh, the client are not going to be happy because of the slow service. And if you go too fast, then there's droplets of champagne that just drop out of the glass. So you also don't make any, anyone happy. But if you have a train water that goes through a control trajectory where all the droplets at the end come back to the back glass, then uh, you have to add one uh, thing in the sense that you go fast and you don't create friction. So this is what we want to do in our quantum uh, systems. Uh, in the framework of this thermodynamics, you can do it for unitary strokes. So uh, compression and the compression where there is no environment and your system is isolated. So these techniques have uh, quite, are quite mature for isolated system. And, but you also want to look at open system where you need to have some interaction with the path for like the cooling and the heating stroke. So I'll touch on that. And of course, if you think in the context of quantum computing, it's also interesting to reach a target state in a faster uh, time because then you can fasten the time of uh, computation, for example. So here is the outline of my presentation. I will present this control scheme to fasten the dynamics first in isolated quantum system and then in system that are open, that is to say interacting with some environment. Uh, for this system, so I first present a general scheme and then uh, some application to control thermalization of a harmonic oscillator. Right. By the way, I didn't uh, mention this work is quite theoretical. If you have any question in between, please don't hesitate and uh, ask around. So uh, let me first go through the theoretical basis of this shortcut to adiabaticity for isolated system. A uh, classical scheme is counter diabetic driving, uh, and it is as follows. Consider that you are driving your system with a time dependent Hamilton and this instantaneous diagonalization here. Uh, when you write the adiabatic approximation, the solution of this dynamics is given here with uh, the correction of phase. So, and the question that we are asking, is there a Hamiltonian that for which the adiabatic approximation is a solution? So even if you go fast and non-adiabatically, can you reproduce this adiabatic approximation with this time-dependent Hamilton? So this was derived by Demirpak and Rice, 
uh, and later independently by Perry. And this is the answer uh, here. So this H1 is the correction Hamiltonian that ensures parallel transpose. So this ensures that you follow the eigenstates of this adiabatic solution and you don't create the excitation. So this is the term that brings all the droplets back in the class at the end of the trajectory. Such techniques have been like uh, very much looked for theoretically, and there's been uh, experimental implementation first in a single particle uh, problem where they removed the, move, the modes of uh, sloshing and breathing. Uh, it's been also implemented in BEC. Uh, so you can see without and here with control, uh, where uh, the control allows to remove these uh, modes of uh, breathing as well. Uh, it's been implemented in a 1D quantum fluid, and I'm going to present implementation in a 3D military Fermi gas. So we chose the unitary Fermi gas because it has this uh, great uh, advantage of being a uh, scale invariant here. So at unitary D, the Fermi gas has an Ernstian symmetry of scale invariance, which means that the interaction potential between particles just scales with this scaling factor here. For this kind of system, there is a, a short that can be found systematically to this local cancer diabetic driving. And basically, uh, all you need to know is the scaling factor. So if you can measure your cloud of atom at time zero and at time t, you obtain the scaling factor from which you can define all the trajectory to implement the control. So for example, let's say that uh, you want to implement like some uh, compression stroke and you decide to do so in a finite time along a reference trajectory here in green. Now, because you go in a finite time, there would be some friction and excitation created in your quantum media, you know, the family gas here. If you want to reach at the end of the process, the adiabatic solution, so the a solution as if you would have gone adiabatically through the process, then the frequency of the trap that you need to implement it is that of the reference, so the green one, uh, and a correction. And you can see here that the correction to implement this counter diabetic Hamiltonian is just given by the scaling factor. So this is what we did, and in, uh, a colleague from uh, Hai Bing Wu at uh, East China Normal University implemented in the Fermi gas. And we look at the non adiabatic ratio that tells you how much friction do you create. So this measure the energy compared to the adiabatic energy. If you have Q star equal to one, that is you, ha you have no friction created in your uh, working medium. And this is what we want. The reference trajectory in this expansion stroke creates some friction because we don't go adiabatically. But here you can see that if you go through the control at the end of trajectory, we have Q star equal to one. So there's no friction created here. During the trajectory, there are creation frictions, but the shortcut is made such that uh, all these cancel at the end. So this is by design. Uh, the same happens for compression, where you would have some creation of friction if you go non adiabatically but through the shortcut, you end up at the end of the stroke with no friction. What happens to the power? Well, uh, basically the power is just the difference of the energy, initial energy, well, final energy minus, minus initial energy. And, and here we compare the reference and um, and the controlled uh, position uh, extracted, uh, controlled uh, work extracted from the medium. And basically with this technique, we have an increase, a very large increase of uh, the work, about 42%, because we have removed the friction. The same happened with compression uh, here. So this is an implementation of these techniques 
in uh, medium that is a 3D unitary Fermi glass. Now, I want to say that these techniques have been so far mainly developed for isolated system in the sense that for system that does not interact with some environment. And we've been looking at extended these to open system and take into account um, some interaction with the environment. This is particularly relevant if you want to do cooling or heating, for example. So a very brief slide on which kind of system could be of interest or which kind of open system uh, can this apply to well, any open system. But here are some uh, open system. If you have super, super conducting qubits or trapped ions, there's always like some qubits that are interacting with some bosonic uh, modes. Same happened with NPC centered quantum dots, or even like uh, natural system, which are much more complex and operating at room temperature, then uh, the system could be a bacterial chlorophyll. So it's a pigment that, that interacts with light going from ground to excited state. And all the protein scaffold around it are the modes that you would treat in your environment as a thermal environment. So there's application in the, these are like photosynthetic light harvesting systems. And uh, this is uh, a molecular aggregate uh, playing a big role in uh, vision retina. So we want to implement the shortcut to adiabaticity in open system. Uh, these had been looked for already by uh, in the group of Flacco Veltron, and but it was mainly extended for uh, Markovian dynamics, assuming some adiabaticity for the limb that operates. There's been development recently for specific systems, mainly a harmonic oscillator uh, that allows for like heating and cooling. I would give some detail on this later. And uh, we developed a general setup for any kind of open trajectory. And this is what I'd like to present uh, here. So the setup is uh, such that we have a trajectory that is arbitrary. So uh, this is the instantaneous diagonalization. And because the eigenvalue are time dependent, uh, it allows the system to be open. It's straightforward to write the trajectory and the master equation. So we have a unitary part that is dictated by the cancer diabetic Hamiltonian. So this comes back to the isolated ca case. And here, because we allow the system to be open, we have a new term, a new dissipator. So this is what we want to model. So we came up with two physical setups where we could implement that trajectory. The first one is through a non-emission system where the cancer diabetic Hamiltonian has some gain and loss uh, and is non-emission. So uh, the equation of motion for this uh, can be directly written. And importantly, uh, this does not preserve the norm. So you can compensate and for uh, this and have a non-preserving trajectory and you end up with something that was introduced already uh, by Brody and Graf in 2012, which is balance gain and loss. So this equation of motions where the gamma is given by basically the derivatives of your eigenstates uh, allow you to generate this arbitrary open quantum um, trajectory. A second physical setup that you can think of to implement this general trajectory is uh, more of the Lindbergh form. So uh, we want to create this dissipator and we can introduce some Lindblad operator given by the instantaneous eigenbasis here and uh, some uh, rates. So in doing so, we can recast the trajectory master equation as uh, in the Lindblad form. Now you can see that this L Lindblad operators are given from the instantaneous diagonalization of the trajectory. So it's not at all obvious how you would do this experimentally. 
also this gamma are time dependent and in general this dynamics is non local so let me show you some example of how this is useful and what we can do with this open system and open uh, this scheme for open system so let me consider like a time dependent harmonic oscillator uh, and we want to go from an initial thermal state to a final thermal state here. So instead of having parallel transport, we need to add redistribution of the eigenstates probabilities because we want to end up, we start with some initial Gibbs probability distribution and we want to end up with another one that is ideally uh, arbitrary. So uh, as I said, we want to reach an arbitrary final thermal state from any given thermal state. We want to do it fast, so super adiabatically, and uh, we want this to be implementable in the lab. So here is our second problem. First, we can write the counter-diabatic Hamiltonian that you would write for the isolated system, and you can see that it's a squeezing uh, Hamiltonian. So if I look at phase space at my thermal state, uh, I would just do some squeezing. Now, oh, because the system is open, uh, well, that's the eigenvalues that are given for the uh, thermal states, but we need basically to implement this dissipator as I presented before. So how we do it, we propose to do it through implementation of engineer defacing in position. So if we are able to have defacing in position with some rate that we need to control, this trajectory will generate a thermal state at some control temperature. Very uh, quickly, like the unitary case as uh, an introduction before the open case. So uh, the unitary case, uh, we can implement the shortcut. And if we look at the map of the states that you can reach the final state, this is inverse temperature, at final time over inverse temperature at initial time. This is the same for frequency, that your final frequency of an initial frequency. So Q trajectory is closed and you only have some unitary dynamics like this. There's no production of entropy. So the map, the, system, the uh, range of systems that you can access at final time are given on this isoentropic line. Uh, for this, it is known that the frequency that you need to implement in the lab is given by the original reference frequency and the scaling uh, factor, as I presented for the unity Fermi uh, graph. Now, we want to be able to access different uh, states and allow for entropy uh, production or entropy reduction. So for this, we engineer the dissipator in uh, the phasing in position. And what we find is that the control frequency that you need to implement is given on a similar form as the open one. But now, instead of having the adiabatic factor that was just this ratio of frequency, we have an additional term that accounts for the temperature change. So this epsilon is uh, beta h by omega t of the controlled uh, trajectory. And in addition, so first, by making the system open, the dynamic open, we have a correction on uh, the control frequency. And we also have some additional changes, which is correction of the control defacing here. So this also depends on the changes of temperature. So how does it look if you were to implement this in the lab? Here, let's say you choose a reference control frequency. These are two different trajectories uh, where you would need to implement the, which gives you the frequency you'll need to implement. The blue one is a faster uh, scheme. And this is the control defacing. So let us look at this control defacing gamma. 
you can see that the shape of this uh, contract defacing does not depend on the process time, but only the maximum depends on it. So this is the maximum of this uh, defacing strength as function of the time of the process. So if you go slowly, then uh, you have to implement like a control frequency that is not too far from the reference one and at the cost that uh, you can measure with the total defacing or the total entropy. And as you go faster, then you have to make more drastic change in the trap and also pay more in entropy and defacing maximum. So here you can see that you really have the faster you go and the more drastic you have to make the changes. So what happens here is that you're compressing your trap more than and then expanding it to uh, reach the final solution. So these are the solution for uh, heating, phase space uh, heating, so where entropy increases, and these are the solution for uh, cooling. So I'm not going to go through the details, it's, we can make the main comments. The main difference is that you need a negative defeating rate uh, if you want to do cooling here. Now, to do this in the lab, there's two ways that we've seen uh, that could be done. The first one is stochastic parametric firing, so you would shake the position of the trap with uh, a strength, that is your defacing rate, and a weight uh, noise here. Another way would be to do continuous measurement in position. In both scenarios, you end up with some noise, uh, well, with a stochastic evolution for the density matrix. And if you take the average of all the noise realization, then uh, you end up with the master equation that we've been looking at with this engineering in the phase. So we've seen that we can do squeezing by shaking the trap, the position of a time dependent harmonic oscillator. You go from a Gaussian. Uh, uh, state to another Gaussian state, but that is uh, squeezed in um, with a, a phase of zero at the end of the process. So this is the Wigner representation of the state uh, along one of the process, and at the end you squeeze in position or moment. <clears throat> Here is the formal uh, squeezing operation. Now we've been looking at methods to allow for control of the phase of the squeezing. So this is relevant in the sense that this phase, final phase that you uh, reach at the end of squeezing, uh, controls the correlation between position and momentum, which you cannot control with this technique. So we came up with an alternative, which is to look at the two photon Raman setup and. Uh, let me show you like uh, the details here. So the Hamiltonian of interest is one of an, a two-level system, an atom with vibrational degrees of uh, freedom, and in, that is interacting with two laser fields. Uh, and we make this amplitude, we will take this amplitude of the laser to be stochastic. After a number of uh, approximation, uh, you can find some effective Hamiltonian where you recreate the two photon Raman interaction with a factor here of the phase. So if you have a closed evolution, that's just the two photon Raman interaction, and the squeezing amplitude that you get here, this alpha t is given by the amplitude of your laser fit and this phase part. In that case, you basically have a linear dependence of the squeezing parameter, how much you squeeze your state with this uh, parameter. And uh, we want to do a bit beyond this, and uh, we basically do reverse engineering so that you can achieve any squeezing parameter, squeezing amplitude in arbitrary time. So you can see in our processes, we don't, we lift the linear dependence of uh, the squeezing parameter with uh, the process type. Importantly, we can also implement like different phase thanks to the difference which, so the phase of the squeezed state and the correlation between momentum and position 
is dictated by the phase between uh, the relative phase between the lasers. So this is for closed dynamics. Now we implement open dynamics in the same with the same master equation that is generated through uh, adding noise on the amplitude of the lasers. And this master equation we show can create the squeeze thermal state at arbitrary temperature in arbitrary uh, phase. So right here, like well, just the formal equation that we uh, solved to show the, this, but uh, let me give you like the control parameter that you would need to implement in the lab. So uh, this alpha gives you the amplitude of the laser that you would need to implement for cooling isothermal or heating process. And this kappa is related to the, the phasing. So here again, we can see the difference, main difference apart from a slight changing in the shape of the alpha, but uh, the main difference of all this process is that for heating, you have a positive uh, dephasing versus for cooling, you need to implement a negative dephasing rate. So with this, I come to my take home messages. I've shown first implementation of short couture diabetes in 3D unitary Fermi gas that allows us to reduce friction in the unitary stroke of compression and decompression. And then we looked at extending this known method of short to diabetesity to open quantum systems. So I first showed some universal scheme that you can always write down and gives you the trajectory uh, or uh, that is the master equation that needs to be implemented to create any arbitrary trajectory. Um, but then I've shown some application of how to use this universal uh, scheme. So a simple, a straightforward application is to do uh, cooling. So this is to shaking a trap of a time dependent Hamiltonian. We get the controlled frequency and the dephasing frequency to do so. And we can uh, generalize these methods and look at the different setup, which is two photon fam, uh, Raman interaction to, in addition to thermalization, so controlling the temperature, we also control the phase uh, of the squeezed state. So if you're interested, these are the papers I've been presenting shortly and uh, you can reach out uh, here. And that's, that's it. With this, I thank you for your attention and I'm open for questions if you have any. Thank you, Aurelia. Are there any questions? Okay, uh, well, if you have any questions later on, uh, please email me or Aurelia. And uh, thank you again for your great presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you everyone.